Welcome back folks. In this video, I'm going to be renovating this old felling axe. Stay tuned. Now a friend of mine is busy doing some renovation work on his house and he's going to be putting in a wood burning stove. The problem is at the moment he's only got a hatchet and that's just not going to be enough for processing all the firewood he'll need for, that, for warming that house. So the project is I'm going to try and renovate this old axe and make it a nice usable tool for him going forward. So my starting point is going to be this American style felling axe. I've had for a number of years because of my rapidly growing axe collection, this one's been languishing in the wood pile for quite some time. You can see it was used quite a bit, it's got some damage on the handle. Obviously the head's quite rusty, it can do with some cleanup. We'll definitely need a sharpen. This one never came with any kind of cover, so a cover will be in order. And then I'll certainly need to do something about the handle. So the plan with the handle will be to use this piece of ash and to make a similar sized handle, I think, to the one that's on it now. The grain looks okay. Folks, this is the Murphy's Law of Axe Handles. When you hang them, you want them to be tight. They always work loose. And when you're trying to get an old, beaten up old handle out of an axe, it's as tight as anything. Starting to look a lot better. So I think what I'll do is I'll definitely make the leather sheath before I sharpen it up so that it's easier to handle. And um, then I'll decide if I want to paint this uh, the back half or not. But we are so wet that painting sometimes is better just to stop it rusting. So I think before I do any more work on the head, I'll now move on to shaping the handle. So the process I'm using to shape this handle, I'll start off with a Shinto rasp. They're very good for removing a lot of material quite quickly. And I'm just following those pencil marks I put in. So I'm creating planes and I can control how much I take off and keep it balanced on each side. So there's a lot of uh, work still to do to get it down to the right size. Just contemplating now that I might, while it's still got a flat surface on the bottom, it's easier to use on the bandsaw. And I might just take this down at a bit more of an angle on the bandsaw to allow um, easier shaping later. Um, that's where the head's going to fit on. So, so far I've been mainly using the Shinto rasp and I've got quite a few different planes in now. The shape's starting to come together but it's obviously very wide still. So my next plan now is to go from that plane into a shallower plane and start working my way around. But you can see the shape starting to come together now. So one thing, I'm going to leave that flat um, until quite near the end for clamping, but also for hanging the head so you can hammer on it.
So I decided to go ahead and paint it because just in the week that I've been working on this, the rust was really building up on the bare metal. So this is a primer and I'm going to put some metal paint on afterwards. Before I put the final coat on though, I'm going to do the fitting of the handle in case I damage the paintwork in that process. <laughs> So I'm just going to keep placing it on, finding out where the sticking points are, and rasping those off. So it's starting to come together pretty well now, um, pretty close to the end. Um, it's taken quite a bit of rasping to get to that point, but you know, that's the joy of hanging an axe. What I did do is left some facets on the side here, which made it easier to clamp in the vise, something worth thinking about before you do the final shaping on the handle. Um, and also I didn't do the final uh, coat of paint which allows me to finish it all off while I'm still bashing at it. Of course, you always get the problem when you're bashing things with mallets. So I think now um, the next step will be do the final shaping of this. Um, then I'll probably shape the rest of the handle. Now there's a couple of schools of thought on the curve for the wedge. Some people cut it when it's still in the square shape, makes it easy to cut. But obviously it's much more delicate than when you're rasping it for shaping it for the, for the axe. So, I don't know, um, I just think this one was a bit safer to make sure that the wood integrity was kept while I was shaping it. All right, folks, we're getting towards the end of this build now. Pretty happy you're gonna leave it there with the, the shaping, done a little bit of sanding. It's pretty much good to go to hang the head. Now, there's a little bit more meat on here than I would normally do, um, certainly for my own preference, but the person who's gonna get this is quite a big guy, big hands, so it gives him a bit of um, wood left to shape for his own preference and the second thing is, is most likely this will be a utility axe probably do a fair bit of splitting and so you know a bit of extra wood to start off with is probably no bad thing the last couple of things to do will be the kerf before I hang the head final bit of sharpening and just finishing off the leather work and then we can oil it up and it's good to go So you can hear the sound subtly changing when you're hammering on the end. It sort of gets a higher pitch when it gets close to the end and the, that's how you can tell you're almost there. So that's protruding slightly, which is exactly what I wanted. And um, I've made a wedge out of Uroco. So it'll be a nice contrast to the ash. And now I need to glue that in. Well, it's now time for one of the best parts of doing any woodwork, when you're putting on the oil and seeing the grain for the first time. As with any freshly carved wood or sawn wood, it's going to need a few coats, but it feels really lovely. I'm quite happy with that. The contrast with the Oroco and the ash looks really good, I think. So I think I'm going to call it a day there with this axe and now just put the leather work on and it's good to go. So that's the completed sheath. So the, the paint was just the color I had, um, but it's quite handy for finding it in the grass if you leave it lying down. But also the stitching, it makes quite a nice match to the paint. So I thought it looked okay. But yeah, pretty happy with the leather works, come out quite nicely. And yeah, that's it, the end of the build. And I'm pretty happy with it. It feels lovely, this ash. It'll hopefully darken with time, with use, with more oiling. So I had a good time. Hopefully you guys found something of interest. Rob, enjoy it. And folks, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.